Hello my brothers and sisters of the order, welcome back to the order, I'm Celtic Templar and welcome back to another how-to video. And today y'all, we are actually covering, covering the, well, the 15th century gallow glass. Now as you can tell, I am dressed in the attire of the 15th century, attire of the gallow glass units. As you can say, there are certain equipment that are different. Can y'all point them out? No? Okay. Well, one of the most obvious would be my gauntlets. My gauntlets are different. I am wearing the mitten variation plate of gauntlets, which the Gallo Glass preferred to use because, one, these were a little bit better than the regular style of gauntlets and cheaper, which means I can easily use my hand a little bit better. But most Gallo Glass preferred not to use these because they preferred something that would, well, mostly be able to easily grip around the Sparth Axe. That's another thing that's different, is my Sparth. My Sparth is different. Now, many of y'all don't know the, what a Sparth is. A Sparth is this uh, style of axe, as you can see here. Now, this is the uh, heavy Sparth. If none of you know the difference between the Sparth type designs, there is a difference between them. One. Uh, way you can understand the difference between the light sparth and the heavy sparth is the blade inch. This is a 12 inch, uh, and they would vary from 7 to 12 inches, so it depends pretty much on your, well, in status, but the ones that actually have this flattened edge, this one you also got to be careful of. Now, there are accounts that the sparth axe is so dangerous on the battlefield that even if you were wearing a helmet, you pretty much still would end up receiving the blow of the axe in such a manner that it would be horrifying. So just imagine this axe coming at you, and in doing so, this is probably the most horrifying part, is that, one, it doesn't need to penetrate your skin for it to kill you. Just the hitting of your skull would probably kill you. In fact, there are accounts that actually stated of grave hordes of warriors from battlefields that apparently they have both an impact to their skull and broken necks. And these date back from the time of the War of the Roses, and the fact is, both the Lancastrian and uh, Yorkist forces used gallow glass in their entirety of battles. So that's kind of the scary part to think about. So just imagine me, a gallow glass warrior uses an axe like this and destroys both Yorkist and Lancastrian forces. So we can see why they use them. Now, the Sparth axe was a horrifying weapon on the battlefield, yes. Now, uh, I am, have recently, uh, am having a Sparth axe being sent to none other than Thrand, which, thank Thrand, hopefully you are watching this video and get a little bit of in tune on how to use this weapon. Mostly they would have it as a swinging motion when they did a charge. Although there are different variations on how they would have used the equipment, so there's not much information I can go on. Since there's no training manuals they would have used, but we do have many accounts stated that this weapon would have been swung overhead for the impact. So this gives us a little information. Now, the Sparth Axe I'm having sent to him is the smaller model, and you'll end up seeing the, probably the difference. Now, he might want to put a helmet on his ballistics gel heads that he's going to use to see whether or not if he, when he impacts the helmet, that it also might break the neck. So, yeah. But it depends variation on uh, how it forms on the battlefield. Now, the Sparth Axe had different versions. You could also thrust with it, but as well you can also hook the legs and then come down with a murder blow chop. So yeah. But as well, another piece of equipment that changed is this. The male collar. I now have it on my upper body, and some of these actually were stated to reach as long as down to my, my elbow. So that's saying how big these things were and these actually did provide very good protection. Now, it varies on history to history if they did it, had a tie in the front or in the back, so eh, it depended. 
as well, the helmet, my bassinet, that's also something that changed. Galgla stopped using the infamous bowl helmets or circular helmets and went more for a, well, cheaper solution. In other words, imports from various kind of people they were fighting for. Another weapon that also started to come around would be this. Now, what is this you might ask? Well, this is no great sword of the Gallo Glass. However, this is a war sword, or as many people call it today as a bastard sword, or hand and a half sword by the English. And this is a devastating weapon. So much so that a lot of these actually started to phase out many of the regular style army swords. Come on, this is easy to swing in motion. And as well, I can also use it with two hands for a more powerful cut. So, we can see probably why they started to use these. But, yeah. Now, I also want to mention this. I highly suggest helping out Thing Thran any way you can, y'all. I, uh, in fact, Thing Thran de desperately needs our help to save his home and such. And recently, his kid, one of his kids, I think, got ill, if I remember correctly. So hopefully, uh, we can help him out any way we can. Anyways, guys, please like, subscribe, and as well, also, please help out Thing Thran as much as you can. I will leave a link down in the description where you can help him out. But as well, y'all, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video.
As y'all see, we have moved inside because unfortunately it got too hot outside. It went from a 106 to 109 Fahrenheit. Now this is uh, the amount on how high that would be in Celsius and such. So that's saying something as well. It's also humid outside and that is just dangerous uh, conditions. And unfortunately I was getting dehydrated, blurriness was starting to take its toll. So, and, f and here's the thing, I was drinking like tons of water, in fact, let me get my <laughs> canteen and you'll see my point. In fact, here's the canteen I use. Yes, this one is old in fashion. Here. You hear that? That is very little now compared to when I started. If it, I had water like right about up here, and it's like probably down into this area. And... That's saying of how much water I ended up having to drink when I was out there doing the filming. So, yeah, that's scary to think about. Now, I want to put this out here to anybody that has actually done reenactments before. Here's the thing. It is not the best weather in August or September to do reenactments. Now, September is probably a little bit better, but August is a dangerous weather, especially if you're wearing mail and gambeson. And especially if you live here in Texas, oh yeah, that is, a, that is the worst form of heat wave. Now I have done reenactments before with Civil War equipment in this August heat, but unfortunately, uh, anything medieval wear, and it's like, at your own peril, so to speak, so yeah. But yeah. Now as y'all saw in the entirety of the video, you saw me swinging around the Gallo Glass Sparfax, like this one. And as y'all saw, the gauntlets kind of got in the way, so that's why I kind of, well, ended up removing them. Now I hear many people already saying, Oh, but Templar, why didn't you wear a certain Gallo Glass style helmet? Oh, you mean this one? Well, that's because this is not exactly meant for the average Gallo Glass warrior. This style of helmet is mostly used by the Gallo Glass nobles. And I hear many people already saying, Oh, but Templar, you have to wear this for the Gallo Glass. Here's the thing, I have to wear this when it comes to the Gallo Glass nobles, but that does not mean that every Gallo Glass ended up wearing these. Now, only a few dozen or so could actually wear these, and these were known as the champion Gallo Glass if they wore these. Because other than the Gallo Glass nobles, uh, only Champion and Gallo Glass could wear these, seeing the fact these were expensive to manufacture. And they were more rare to see being used by the Gallo Glass than the bassinets. So yeah. But hopefully y'all liked this little video because very soon we will get into the Gallo Glass Levy in our next video on the Gallo Glass. And this is going to be of the 15th century as well. And in doing so we are going to cover, well, as we put to the various type of forms. Now, uh, Thrand will also probably get his axe sometime in late August or early September, so whenever he makes it, the video, I'll make sure to add it to our own poll screen, but as well, also y'all, please help him out any way you can, because one, he's needing it to save his home and all that, so hopefully y'all can help him out in any way you can, so that way we can actually see more of his content, because one, we, I really hate to see his, uh, his, him lose his home because one, YouTube actually once demonetized and as well got rid of his channel and I actually feel the same way of how he does with YouTube, seeing the fact they've also deleted several of my other channels, one being my firearms channel, my horror history channel once, and as well several other channels for no reason, which 
kind of makes me wonder if YouTube even knows what the heck they're doing anymore. But yeah. But yeah, hopefully, Thrand, you end up getting your, well, Sparth Axe. But in doing so, your axe is going to be a little bit different compared to mine. It's not going to be the big model like this. It's going to be the small model, which is like 7 inches. And those are still dangerous. And in fact, they actually have more of an impact hit. So much so that, one, this thing is huge, but... Uh, Yours is probably going to be a little lighter compared to mine. Now, keep in mind, y'all, these axes were dangerous on the battlefield, as I stated. As they were known to, even if you got impact into the skull, it would not be the impact to your cranium that would end up killing you. It would be the fact that your neck got broken, which would kill you. In fact, collarbones were broken, the bodies were destroyed, especially, it's also been stated that even male actually got torn asunder from just the blow. So that's saying of how heavy duty these things were. Now, just imagine on the impact blow of this weapon, it is this horrifying thing about. But every time I swing this thing, this thing is going to be a nightmare. Now, I do highly advise people to do some training with these before you start using them, because <laughs> especially if you're going to get the big ones like I got, because this, these things are heavy. So, yeah. Now, I hear many people already asking, but Templar, why did you change the axe? Why did you go to this design and not keep, well, this design? Well, quite simple. By the later periods, most of the Sparth axes started to look like this model here. So, it pretty much depended on the weapon status. And as well, the reason behind the Galagos preferred this design is because the way the shape of the axe head is. Meaning, this way, the reason it's like this is because, one, this acts like a hatchet. Only to human flesh. Or to the human body. Now, what does that mean? Well, take a hatchet, for example, from, say, your everyday utility store and compare it to a woodcutter's axe. Because, one, each axe is a different style in its own form. So, to that form, you can see why. So yeah, Dane axe designs that have the curvature were dangerous, but the Galagos found that a flat edge like this would be somewhat more dangerous, especially when it comes to hitting a surface of body armor. So in other words, the more impact it gave, the more dangerous it was on the battlefield. But yeah. Anyways guys, like and subscribe for more, and hopefully to see y'all in the next one for our next few videos on the 15th century Galagos, and then we will get hopefully into the 17th and 16th century Galagos, which are known as the later period Galagos, that everybody starts to recognize. Uh, but a lot of y'all also asked, Templar, why didn't you go with the Galagos Greatsword in this video? Well, that's because those great swords didn't come out until this late 15th century, and pretty much only into the 16th century they started to use them. So, yeah. But, hopefully you see all in that video some other time, and as well, please stay tuned for our 15th uh, century videos on the Galaglass Levy and the Galaglass Nobles soon. Anyways, guys, if y'all have any type of videos y'all want me to cover that are based on the history and warfare of these ancient warriors in history, please let me know in the comments below of what you want me to do. Such as if you want me to do the Dacians, the Picts, the Scotty, or whatever, and as well Persian and such. Now I am planning on doing the Dacian soon. The problem is I gotta get it, one, the Dacian Falks, two, gotta finish up the scale armor, and three, gotta get a couple of Dacian helmets to further make the equipment better. So yeah, hopefully you see y'all in the next one soon, that type of version soon, because it will take me a while, but hopefully I can do it by ne sometime next year, because I am suffering from financial issues my, myself, and I only managed to send uh, an axe, a thing, thread, because one, it can probably help out this content, and I have never seen him use an axe before. I have seen him do the sword before. If y'all are interested in seeing that, please check him out. I will leave links down below for both helping him out, and as well, also his channel as well. And as well, y'all, if y'all actually want to dress up the same equipment I did 
and probably, well, hopefully not sweat y'all selves to oblivion, which please don't. Uh, I will leave links down below in the description where you can get this certain equipment, especially my neck collar is, or my uh, male mantle as some people call it, my bassinet, my male, my gambeson, my sparth axe in general. Now this one was a custom made one, uh, which, yeah, that's saying something. So I will leave a link for him, for the guys that made this bad boy, but if y'all want something that's a different style of sparf, I will leave a link like that also down in the link in the description below. But hopefully to see y'all in the next one. And, uh, but yeah. Uh, hopefully to see y'all in the next one, y'all. Like and subscribe for more. And hope to see y'all in the next one. Have a great day, y'all. Mm -hmm.